Hey everyone, Jason here from Off The Beaten Path and we're pretty excited. Um, just out the front of our place and waiting on the new vehicle to arrive. Well, new to us vehicle. Um, so it's coming up on a car carrier from Melbourne. Uh, shouldn't be too far away. Um, really exciting. So I'm still not going to tell you what it is. You'll have to wait and see it. Um, as I said, it's, a, it's an older, I will tell you it's a 1997 model. Short wheelbase, hard top, four wheel drive with a transfer case. So there you go, that's starting to narrow it down, isn't it? Um, yeah, we're really looking forward to this. Um, being an older vehicle, it does need a little bit of love, a little bit of work. So phase one is really going to be getting the, the blue slip and getting the vehicle ready for registration and roadworthiness here in New South Wales because it's been registered in Victoria, not in New South Wales where we are. And then from there we'll start looking at what the first mods might be to the vehicle but um, the plan is pretty early on we'll probably head back to Wamagama and uh, that'll probably be its first trip off road and Sharon will be driving it because it's it's going to be her car which is pretty awesome. So really looking forward to that guys. Um, be back soon. Now in terms of why did we buy the vehicle that we bought, the major factor was for Sharon the size of the vehicle. Next consideration after that was parts availability and uh, support that's generally available for the vehicle. So this particular vehicle has a pretty passionate following and you can still buy parts for it new even though it's a 1997 model. Here comes the car carrier delivering it. I'll give you a hint, it's not the use. So if you know what you're looking at there, you can see the vehicle on the back of the car carrier there is a 1997 TJ Wrangler, it's the 4 litre 6 cylinder petrol with an automatic transmission, it's a 3 speed automatic. So yes, we bought a Jeep. And it's going to be really exciting to see how this pans out. Now we bought this vehicle through Grieve Parade Motors down in Melbourne. A shout out to Adam there. Uh, he was great to deal with, really helpful. Uh, worked with us given that we we're buying it remotely and could only really get down on weekends to inspect the vehicle. Um, and we did get a mechanical inspection done just for peace of mind. So we already know there's a few things that need doing on this vehicle. But as I think you can probably see there, it's a really clean example of an early, T early Jeep Wrangler being a TJ Wrangler. It's in the green and tan color, which uh, we really liked. Um, it's probably had a little bit of off-road use. The tires on it at the moment are road bias tires, uh, and it doesn't appear to have had a suspension lift uh, or anything like that. There's some Iron Man shocks in there that are clearly aftermarket, but I don't believe it's actually had a lift. Um, and as I said, it's a straight six, uh, being such an early TJ, it's got a distributor rather than a coil pack, um, so that's interesting. Um, we'll see how it goes with water crossings and what we need to do there. Um, chatting to some Jeep owners, they reckon the, the six cylinders with the distributor still go okay in water crossings, uh, and it's got the, the hard top on there. Um, now, what we know it needs doing is some general maintenance, all the oils and fluids need doing, the brake pads need doing, probably the front rotors need doing. Um, beyond that um, remains to be seen. We may or may not have to do a little bit of work on the transfer case. Um, again, these seem to be a Jeep specific thing. The way I've always understood you change into low range is that you go into neutral uh, when you're in four high and you stop and then you move into four low and then you go back into drive or whatever gear you're looking to select if you're driving a manual. With these TJs apparently you go into neutral but the vehicle needs to be rolling to move from four high to four low which is a little bit new so um, yeah but look the size of the vehicle is really good great approach and departure angles um, good clearance, um, particularly once we get a lift, we won't be doing anything crazy with this one. It'll be you know, a standard sort of two inch lift, that's that's all that'll probably be uh, going in here. Um, 
let's get it off the car carrier and get a closer look at it. Thank you. Adam, how are you going? Uh, yeah, mate, um, just arrived about uh, 15 minutes ago. Hey everyone, Jason here from Off the Beaten Path. This is the TJ Wrangler that we've bought. So I thought we'd give you a quick run through. Um, you, you've seen some footage of the outside and look, generally it's, it's, in, uh, it's in pretty good nick. Um, it has had a little bit of a touch up or respray on the paintwork. Um, the cool thing with this particular one is the, the guards here and the extensions on the front here are actually painted um, body colour which is really cool. As you can see like the handles will need a bit of a touch up. Um, we've got some plans for the uh, hard top. Um, having a look inside, uh, the seats are actually in really good condition, the front seats, and that's because they've actually been replaced. Um, some of the trim um, has had some wear marks on it like you might expect to see particularly the tops of the doors um, and it needs a good clean like there's some marks on the dash and some of those areas let me just go around and open the other door so um, yeah the, the dash here has had something kind of quite sticky stuck on it some stickers or something um, the, uh, the knob on the AC is not, not really factory, um, not really sure what's going on with her head unit. But look, generally it's in really pretty good condition. Um, the carpet's a little bit stained. Um, that's one of the things that we've got planned for the, the job is we'll, we'll take the seats out probably and pull the carpet up and just see what kind of condition the tray is in under there and um, see what we can do about those carpets and cleaning them up. We'll need to get some mats for it as well. Um, and um, yeah, center consoles in pretty good nick. And you can see that these are new seats in the front. Well, new from a, another TJ because the, um, the original trim is on those seats in the back there. Um, so like, um, like all TJs, it's designed for, I think it's the driver's seat to fold forward. Um, and again, they're, they're pretty basic, um, pretty basic inside. Um, but, um, yeah, 
So we're going to start off just giving it a little bit of a clean inside, um, bring it up to scratch a little bit, um, and then we'll get the, the um, blue slip inspection done, get it roadworthy, and then we'll go um, from there. So um, I'll just come around to the back. So just in case you're not familiar with Wranglers, they're sort of on the back, they're almost like a ute. So you've got a, a, a side swinging tailgate rather than a, a drop down tailgate. And then you've got um, the, uh, the rear glass window on the hard tops it just folds down and um, locks onto um, the tailgate. So you've, you don't have a lot of storage. You've got maybe 200 mil of storage there um, behind those rear seats. Um, they do they do fully come out so look that's something that we'll look at um, given that this is you know going to be a second vehicle for our trips um, there's not not going to be a need for a lot of gear in this vehicle so we might leave the second seats in or we might take them out um, just remains to be seen they do fold down pretty readily though so um, and um, yeah just a few few little areas like the number plate holder there we'll, we'll give that a bit of a rub back and touch it up with some uh, rust inhibitor and some black paint, um, just a few cosmetic things like that that we can do uh, to really bring it back. But overall, um, for its age, it's in really good condition. Um, I'll show you quickly um, underneath, there's a little bit of surface rust in the body pan. Chassis rails are really good. A um, few sort of weeps coming out of some of the, the gaskets, um, so they might need a little bit of attention. Um, Things that we already know that are going to come up in the inspection are things like I'm um, pretty sure it's going to need new rotors on the front, new pads on the front, probably pads on the rear. Um, they'll probably ping us on this spare tyre. The, the tyres actually on the road are good, they're almost new, but the spare here is pretty ordinary um, and probably wouldn't pass roadworthy. Um, and there's uh, a lot of the suspension bushes uh, and that sort of thing are fairly worn under there as well. So uh, yeah, we'll see how, how that goes. but. Can't wait to get this thing out on the road and trying it out. I know Sharon's keen to uh, to be driving it, so we'll uh, we'll get stuck into a bit of cleaning. And give you a look when we're done. Hey everyone! So just having a quick look under the Jeep here, so you can see like the chassis rails have got a bit of oil or seepage that's come out of this this big center pan here, um, probably from the transmission there. Um, covered on them but um, look generally they're in really good nick a um, little bit of surface flaking but uh, really old set of Iron Man shocks there but I'm pretty sure this doesn't have a lift at all just looking at how horizontal those control arms are actually sitting you can see there the transfer case and the, the oh actually not quite you can see the front drive shaft uh, heading in to the front diff there so it's going to be a very different vehicle to have as part of the channel solid axles front and rear and as i said like looking at the back up in the body pan up underneath there a little bit of surface rust um, you know again the rear diff uh, seals probably need doing just looking at the weeping out um, on that uni joint um, that's that's going to need some attention, but um, yeah, all in all, it's um, it's in pretty good nick. Um, and yeah, you've got that rear pan there at the back, which uh, possibly the fuel tank. Starting with some of the small jobs, that's the rear number plate holder. I've given that a bit of a sand and a bit of a clean up. Just going to take it off the car and prime it and. Uh, Get it ready to have a number plate on it. So a couple of coats of rust converter after a quick sand and a couple of coats of black paint um, and uh, it's back on there looking a lot better than what it did before. So everyone that's the wrap up to the first video of the TJ. We're pretty excited to be adding that to the channel and I know Sharon's very excited to, to take it out on its first trip uh, hopefully soon. Step one is going to be getting that blue slip inspection where in New South Wales the vehicle was purchased in Victoria um, so that's why we got it without any plates on it um, so the blue slip for those that aren't from New South Wales is a, a little bit more than your standard roadworthy inspection so that's booked in in the next few days uh, we'll get that done 
that'll tell us what we actually need to do in order to be able to get the vehicle registered. Uh, then we'll get that work done. Um, you guys will probably see some of that. Um, we'll, we're certainly intending to film as much as we can and tell the story of this vehicle as we go. Um, as much for having a record for ourselves as sharing it with you guys. Um, as you've seen, for a 1997 model vehicle, um, it's remarkably clean, I think, anyway. Um, you know, we uh, one thing we, we haven't mentioned yet is there might be some gremlins in the transfer case, which is kind of ironic given that I've already done the transfer case in the Pajero, but we'll just have to wait and see how that comes out. Um, and um, yeah, we're already starting to discuss what the, the first mods will be. Um, we might even do a video about, uh, you know, about that decision making process and, you know, our thoughts on what the important first mods are. Um, given that we already have uh, onboard air with the Pajero, and at this stage anyway, the Jeep's unlikely to go anywhere off-road without the Pajero. Um, it won't be an air compressor that'll be first up. I, I always think having the ability to let air out of your tyres and put air back into the tyres should be pretty high on your list. Um, and we already have a handheld radio, so um, we'll probably utilise that in the TJ to start with um, before we figure out you know, where we want to mount antennas and that sort of thing. So um, tyres and suspension are where we'll probably be looking to start. Um, and being a Wrangler, there's a host of options, but we're not looking to do anything too crazy. Probably just a straightforward two inch lift. Um, and it'll be interesting. I'll have a chat to Sharon about whether she wants to look at uh, all terrain or mud terrain tires. Um, given that this will only be driven for trips off road, um, where the Pajero is my daily driver, um, it might be an option to look at mud terrain on this. Uh, but look, it should be a really, really fun build. Um, we're really looking forward to uh, getting out there with this vehicle um, and on a pretty steep learning curve with the Jeeps. Um, and it's been a long time since I've had a petrol vehicle with a distributor in it. So um, a little bit old tech, but um, look, one of the things that we like about this vehicle is that uh, it might you know, be scoped for us to do a little bit more of the work ourselves because it's a very simple vehicle overall. Um, anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this addition, addition to the channel and hope you've enjoyed this video and look forward to bringing you more trip videos, more information on the TJ and what's happening with that and the first trip with the TJ, which will probably be back to Woomagama um, because that's that's the only trip Sharon's actually driven and it'll give her a really good opportunity to then talk about her experience driving the Pajero. Um, the thing she didn't really like about driving the Pajero was that for her, um, she struggled to have visibility of the front of the vehicle. The bonnet is fairly high and you can't actually tell um, unless you've driven the car quite a lot, where the tyres are sitting and the vehicle for her just felt very, very large um, and, you know, difficult to tell where it's tracking and all those sorts of things. And, you know, it is reasonably heavy, which we won't go into. Um, so the Wrangler TJ is, uh, you know, about half the weight of the Pajero uh, for a start. It's um, and a much smaller vehicle with good visibility and nice flat sides. The wheels are actually the, the, the furthest part of the vehicle out. So here's hoping that she enjoys driving the Jeep off road and will be on many trips to come. So thanks everyone, signing off for now and see you in the next video.